And welcome back to the Constitutionals Podcast. I'm your host, Chad White. If you didn't know, this is the premier podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. Welcome back. 265. It's been a minute, about a month and change. Much in that month, a month and a half. Uh, that's the title, a month and a half. All right. Uh, what am I, the Doughboys? Anyway, um, we are back uh, doing the show once again some things about me uh, i work at cnn now and i have a dog here he comes <laughs> he's sauntering over where's he going oh he's coming that way uh this is maverick come here oh he's right here uh his he lives with me and the cat nova and we are one big happy family uh the two of them fight and they also love each other which is the most important part what else is going on? We're just seeing and I do this. Uh, all right, we're back. The real, I, there's no reason I took time off. I just didn't want to do the show for a little bit. <laughs> don't you ever not want to do something? I don't get paid for it. It's fine. We're still in the midst of... Uh, what the? We're still in the midst of of striking uh, and uh, we. <laughs> as, if I, <laughs> as if I'm part of any union. You know, I'm a union buster. I get in there, I break up what's going on in the unions, I don't do nothing like that. I'm like Stephen Amell. Stephen Amell uh, said, he said it's he doesn't like the strike. And then I just got an email, which is what I just responded to a couple of seconds ago. Was uh, It said, um, uh, I was just looking at the email. It, we clarified the comments, and he was like, if you see me on the picket line, um, no, he said, when you see me on the picket line, please don't whip any hard fruit. Like, dude, you are, you have got to understand that they're not strike. They're like, he said, he doesn't like the striking part. He says he's staying with the union, but he doesn't like the striking part of it all. He thinks it's, um, uh, uh the, the, the medieval and that's not the word he used, but I mean, you know, striking is the only way that they're going to under that the studios are going to understand and that people who don't work in the industry, that's how they're going to understand, you know, because when you when you see Starbucks employees or UPS people or uh, or rather any any mail carriers or when you see just any person striking, be it a hunger strike or a labor strike, you you should be able to understand or like at least see where they come from or at least acknowledge it. You know, like the I remember the original strike happened when I was in high school and I remember uh, uh, or the original strike, strike, excuse me, the last strike happened when I was in high school. And I remember this, this guy, uh, said, uh, oh, cause he, it's somebody mentioned the strike and he goes, oh, the writer's strike because they want more money. Those, uh, the, those selfish writers want more money. I was like, dude, you're, you know, you're 16 years old. <laughs> yeah. Like, like people, you don't understand. P- I, I mean, people who aren't in the industry, who even if they say they understand, like they get it, they will never understand that, you know, you get paid so little when com- when compared to, I thought I just grabbed something from my my shelf right here. But you know, you get paid so little when compared to the bigger stars of it all. You know, Judd Apatow gets paid way more, way more than, you know, just some writer on uh, She-Hulk. This, and that is the first show I can think of. I couldn't think of, and, 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 and you know, oddly enough, that show, the I think the last episode, the season finale, or the episode before that, featured the writers of the show. Uh, and also that show was not good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to say this. I, I saw Barbie. Uh, I don't like Greta Gerwig at all. I have a lot of issues with her. Uh, one including that she does not hire people of color to do movies, and it took until this movie for her to hire people of color uh, to even have more than one speaking line. Uh, but I saw the movie, and I didn't go in there angry and like because oh, I paid money to watch the movie. I wanted to, I wanted to, to you know, see what it was about. Um, and uh, um, where was I going with this? I just, I, I don't know. I thought I, I'm, I'm not a huge. I, th- I think there, were, there are. are as stereo as like as as stereotypical as the things that they were pointing out were, I think that just kind of landed more than the message that they were trying to leave. And I think and it's and I felt a lot like the the episodes of um, 
Big Mouth, where they explain, you know, gender or femininity. Like there, there's one episode of season where they take time out from the story and all the characters talk down to the audience. And I just don't. And that's what it is. I just feel like it's talked down. I dated a I dated a young lady who uh, would often talk down to me about things like like if mansplaining is bad, then she was. Uh, woman talk downing and it made me feel like crack i've like it just made me feel so bad um you know what i just realized i started this episode i have about 15 stories here (laughs) that are all from like june july and last week here's what we're gonna do i'm gonna start reading the titles (laughs) and then i'm going to uh just go through them in whatever way, in whatever fashion. Uh, this one says Netflix subscriptions uh, rise as they charge for passwords. I'm not. I'm not even going to keep the link in there um, for some of these. So the Netflix subscriptions they actually did rise, uh, but I I think because people see a value in having uh, out of all the streaming platforms, I think people see the value in having Netflix, and so. Um, the, the, the thing was people were like, Netflix was going to charge more if you were having, if you had, uh, multiple accounts, multiple out of home accounts rather on your Netflix account. Uh, so if you had like mom and dad and Stacy and Gwen and Michelangelo and Leonardo and Peter Parker, Ninja Turtle, Spider-Man. Uh, but if you had all those people on there and only mom, dad, and Stacy lived at home, then those are the ones that they wouldn't charge for normally, like regular Netflix. And then the other ones, they would charge like an extra seven or eight bucks per. Um, uh, which I, I don't know other streaming platform is doing, and they're, and that's just a way to get extra money from you. Um, just the same way that they're charging for 4K. Uh, same thing for Max, which I dislike. But now that I work at CNN, I get free Max. Only in HD, though. I yeah, you better believe. I emailed. I was like, "Do you think I can get the 4K?" And guess who they did not respond to? <laughs> All right, let's move on. Uh, Warner's licensing shows to Netflix. Uh, this is just a. This is a. I think this is a good idea. It's a fantastic way for a company to earn a little extra money. You just, it's the similar how uh, uh, Warner least it shows like it took the shows off of max which i don't like but it took shows off of max like uh raised by wolves and um lovecraft country jesus i couldn't think of, and westworld and at least lovecraft country and westworld to Tubi um on for their fast platform channel on Tubi for the warner like the warner family whatever that one is called uh they're doing the same thing to netflix but i mean it's just i mean it's just leasing it's you know it's seinfeld uh, being available on Hulu and Netflix. It's, you know, it's, it's, um, uh, friends being on, uh, Warner, you know, they could either they produce or they don't whatever, but they're still making money. It's fine. Uh, so if you saw insecure on Netflix, if you saw, if you're going to see band of brothers, I think you might see, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure about the Sopranos. I would doubt that they would do the Sopranos and like, like do like a lot of the big shows like Sopranos and band of brothers at the same time on different platforms, but uh, you know, whatever. Um, uh, let's see. Stitcher is shutting down Sirius XM. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Stitcher is shutting down and Sirius XM is going to be the home for the company's podcast. Uh, the thing is they want to have one audio platform. I think it is best to have a separate Sirius XM and Stitcher platform. But when, when, um, uh, when Stitcher was created, at first it was Howl, and it was uh, then it was owned by C- uh, EW Scripts, a company I used to work for, uh, and then and then it was sold off to, oh God, who's who owns? Oh, Sirius. I mean Sirius. Whatever. It was sold off to Sirius. Uh, they. I mean that was that's just two competing competing platforms. The difference is, you know, Disney has Hulu and Disney Plus. There, those are like defined genres, uh, uh, and, and, and platforms for themselves. But Stitcher. All that stuff could be found on SiriusXM, or most of it, not all of it, but a lot of it could be found on SiriusXM. Uh, I think it should have existed as it's like Stitcher can still exist um, uh, in its own right, but uh, unfortunately, people have to go use this. And I subscribe to SiriusXM, but people have to go use this app now. Um, this is not out yet. It's a Spotify Hi Fi. It was a May launch sometime soon with a higher tier, but I just, whatever. Uh, let's see. Oh, there was a, there's an article called, 
when David Zaslov is your boss, 20 plus insiders on his exacting standards and those 6.30 a.m. calls. This comes from The Hollywood Reporter and by Lacey Rose, Kim Masters, Alex Weprin. There, this this is after that uh, profile by Chris Licht, uh, from Chris Licht, rather, uh, from, about Chris Licht in The Atlantic. This is another just long form piece of, uh, I truly, I don't remember it because I, you, you got to stop, dude. This is, uh, this is uh, a long form piece uh, that I don't really remember, but um, it is it is a good read talking about the executives who work under, you know, uh, Zaslav and, and, and this. Uh, and I truly wish I had uh, <laughs> I had gone over this before, but who cares? So I'll keep that one in. That'd be a good one to read. Oh, the Golden Globes are done. The uh, Hollywood Foreign Press Association is no more, so the Golden Globes are not happening ever again at least in this iteration. Uh, at least I got one more good year. Was it a good year? I don't know. Ice Cube's a pimp. It was a good day. It's a good song. Uh, Netflix has a new metric that is very that is not very informational. They used to measure, Netflix used to measure um, its uh, rankings um, it, the, the way that it shows and movies and stuff, uh, it used to measure it in minutes watched. And now I do believe that, uh, let's see the, this version of a view by the company is definitely, Oh, this comes from Hollywood reporter written by Rick Porter. This version of a view by the company's definition, total time spent watching a movie or a series divided by the runtime. They say it's easier to understand just by than by how many people are watching or have watched it in you know thirty minute. I think I think a movie you have to watch thirty minutes of it or something like that in order for or you had to watch thirty minutes in order for it to count as a view. No, excuse me, seventy percent of a movie that was that was the original thing. Seventy percent of a movie or seventy percent of a single TV episode TV TV series episode. And then it switched in 2019 to watching two minutes of any title. That's long enough to show intent as a view. And then uh, the 70% uh, standard made little sense for TV series in particular. And the two minute count was more akin to view tallies on YouTube, which uh, where in the first 30 seconds or any 30 seconds is a uh, counts as a view. Uh, this, uh, the, the way that they, that I think they should, th there should be, there are measurement systems for regular, um, companies for, for, for regular TV viewership numbers, uh, that include the Nielsen rating system. And as well as I think, I don't know if this is still happening, but the broadcast networks were coming up with their own way to, 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 to count views. But yeah. Uh, there's there's better ways, and I, I still don't like Netflix's way, and I would rather you just tell them this is how many people watched Wednesday because uh, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, but uh, but again, I mean, I don't know how Nielsen works. But, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on to this next one. Uh Okay, this is this might be a good one to talk about to, and also to keep in because I don't know if anyone's discussed. Actually, you know what? I might save this for news time because I definitely do need stuff for that. All right, let's move on to this next topic. <laughs> That's how you do it. Oh, the New York Times is disbanding its uh, sports section in favor of the Atlantic, so it's laying all those people off, which is unfortunate, and the Atlantic will now be the home of all the sports stuff. Uh, which is something that uh, we get from under the desk. Hey, which is something that get from under there that people that we knew was going to happen. I believe that that same day that that article was posted, um, uh, which was a Sunday, the excuse me, that was a Monday. The Sunday before the sports people had gone to the New York Times heads and were like, we need to have a meeting about this and here are our ideas. And then the next day, the sports people were laid off, which is, I it was, I think that's something that was, uh, a, you know, a couple of, a, a, a bit of time in the planning, but the fact that they didn't even get to voice their opinion with that was just uh, insane. It's, it's so stupid. 
Uh, you know what? That's a good episode for news time itself, too. What else? What else? What else? Oh, my God. Did I just delete, like, things I needed? Here, I'll do that. Okay. Because I don't know if I kept that. Okay. I'll back up on that, and then I'll delete this. Whew. No, not duplicate. Delete. Notion is so hard. And then this is the news time episode. All right. So if you want, I gave you the I gave you the gist of the other stuff. Uh, here's another one. This is this is a good one that'll be a, a good. Uh, don't eat dirt. Hey, come here, come here. Jesus, he's he destroyed a plant like his second week here. Like no, truly like his third day here, and now he's eating dirt from the same plant. I know it's my fault for keeping the pot there, but don't eat dirt. Good Lord. Okay. Let's get into this. This is the loosest episode of Constitutions I've ever been. This comes from Cord Cutters News, written by Lick Boma. No, 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 no. Come here. Local ABC, CBS, Fox, and NBC owners want the FCC to force YouTube TV, Hulu, Fubo, and more to make deals directly with them. What's happening right now is uh, sports stations like BN and Fox Sports are you know in terms of youtube tv being taken off they're not they're not making more deals with them um and it's it is frustrating to see you know not be able to watch uh uh like a a, a braves game at even if they're playing at home and and you should be able to watch it on fox sports or something like that but now these tv stations uh who are also being charged uh, or who are you know you, when you when you're a tv station and you want to be on uh, YouTube TV, you can charge them, uh, you know, X amount of money, depending on who you are. Paramount, I think, charges twelve dollars per head, I think, uh, which is why YouTube TV went up twelve dollars all those years ago. I think it was like two years ago. Anyway, and I still pay for it, <laughs> but it's so good to have live TV. You know, I can watch The Simpsons; they're played every single day on FXX. I can watch HGTV and yeah, I can watch that stuff on Disney plus and on max, but I have to be deliberate and choose. All right, I'm going to watch a marathon of diners, drive-ins and dives, <laughs> but I don't want to choose that. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to know, Hey, hey come here. I want to know that it is uh Friday night. I'm home from work and I can just sit down and watch three hours of diners, drive-ins and dives. <laughs> okay. So recently, hundreds of local TV stations have asked the FCC to change the rules that allow live TV streaming services to sign big national deals with local TV stations. To do this, 600 local TV stations are uh, forming the Coalition for Local News to work together. Now, these local TV stations want the FCC to change the rules that would force live TV streaming services to make deals directly with the owners of local TV stations. Oh, he just drooled. And there's dirt on it. I'm so pissed at you. God, there's like, ugh, this is so gross. And I touch my $100 mouse after this. <laughs> that comes from Axios. Uh, uh, now, currently, traditional cable companies have to negotiate with each local provider. So they, so like uh, Spectrum will have to talk to um, uh, CBS, so your local CBS, in, in order to be, you know, whatever. Um and then this is this would change for streaming services when they when they're added to it. Uh, this is I mean, this, this, everybody's out for cash. Everybody's out for money, and it is um, difficult to see how people are people are moving away from traditional the traditional model of television. And even if you do subscribe to YouTube TV and Direct TV Stream and Hulu with Live TV and Fubo, um, and um, What's the S one? Uh, Jesus. What is it? I was in the beta for it. Uh, the S one, Sling. Uh, and, and even if you're part of all of the, any of one of those, um, the, the future does not look bright for that. <laughs> Same thing for streaming. No, do not eat that. The future does not look bright for that. And, and it's, it's going to get more and more difficult for people to watch what they want to watch. But the broadcasters need money too, you know. I mean, just now I just read an article this morning, uh, a feature piece talking about one of the actors from 
uh, Bob Hart's Abishola. And if you don't know, that show's a, a fantastic show on CBS. I'm not kidding. It is a, a very funny show. I really like it a lot. Um, that involves uh, a white man falling in love with an, a Nigerian uh, lady. And that's not the story of the show. That happens. They fall in love like quit, like within like four or five episodes. Or she agrees to go out there in four or five episodes. And then by the next season, they're married. And then by the next season, they're uh, uh, you know, her mother moves in with the, it's, it's a great show full of great actors and you see different walks of life and I love it. But this next season, this fifth season is going to be cut down to 13 episodes instead of 22. It's a, a multicam sitcom and 11 of the cast members of the main cast members out of the 13 main cast members, 11 of them are, uh, are going to be reduced down because of budget cuts uh, they're cutting the episodes from 22 to 13, and they're reducing all of them, all of the main characters, with the exception of Bob and Abishola, down to um, recurring, which means they make a lot less. Which is, you you see what the studios are doing in order to make their bottom line, you know, so they can line their pockets with money. And uh, uh, don't, it's not stop, dude. I'm trying to be serious. Uh, and 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 in order for them to make their money, and uh, so that these other these actors can make a lot less. And I mean, this happens all across the board. This happens from broadcast to cable to streaming to podcasting to like to radio to literally anything. Uh, it is it is just um, uh, I'm be, I'm beside myself with all of this. Um, but yeah, that's what's happening over there with that. All right, let's move on. The Academy says it's committed to diversity. This comes from Clayton Davis. Man. This comes from Clayton Davis, Davis over at Variety. Academy sends letter to don't do not bite me. Sends letter affirming commitment to diversity initiatives after multiple exec, black executives quit. And the episode of uh, the episode, the the bit of news that um I uh uh, saved earlier was involving black women leaving executive positions in Hollywood. Ah, uh-uh, come here. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences sent a letter to its members on Friday evening addressing. Now this is from July, I think. Uh, yeah, July fifteenth. Uh, addressing the recent departure of multiple black executives from its organization over the past couple of weeks, and these people include. At least four black leaders of the academy. Chief Operations Officer Christine Simon Simmons, Vice President Global Relations and Member Outreach Patrick Harrison, uh, who'd been there for 22 years, Executive Vice President of Impact and Inclusion Janelle English, and more recently, hey, come here, and more recently, uh, Executive Vice President of Member Relations, Global Outreach and Awards Sean Finney. Uh, the, the, in addition, the Academy has drawn controversy for its April appointment of Meredith Shea as chief membership impact, uh, and impact and industry officer who, in addition to overseeing all Academy memberships, award submissions and department budgetary items is also charged with leading diversity efforts. Noteworthy, according to a study by Zipia, 76% of chief diversity officers are white across the professional disciplines. So I assume Meredith Shea is a white woman. Uh, it is, uh, we, we see, we're seeing this more and more lately. I just finished Burning It Down. Let me uh, get the title of that book. Burning It Down, Power, Complicity. Oh, Jesus. Oh my God. Burning it down. Power, complicity, and a call for change in Hollywood by Maureen Ryan. Hey, Jesus. Give me a second. I'm not going to cut that out. It's pissing me off. Burning it down. Uh, burn it down, rather. Power, complicity, and a uh, call for change in Hollywood written by Maureen Ryan. Um, and it's a fantastic book. It's a little preachy towards the end that, <laughs> that encapsulates problems with indie industry from everything from SNL to lost, uh, to, uh, uh, actors of color, women, people, of, people with disability, differently abled, uh, just all types of reasons and stories. Why, some why why people were fired or let go or not hired from a job or uh or hired as, as tokenism you know and 
it's uh it's it sucked to see and it, it really it really blew to hear some of those stories uh and i listened to that by the pool that's not a joke i listened to that by the pool and it mentioned a book that i'm also reading the tender box uh which is the hbo book and uh, i'm currently reading that book and she described it I'll, I'll say this she put it and she described it in one line and i'm gonna ruin it by i'm a butcher it but she said she was talking about hbo uh, which was very much a boys club. Uh, but she said something along the lines of uh, the people in the book are looking up to this executive as if he is, uh, you know, God when it should have been, um, I'm ruining it, but but it should have been like something else. Uh, it should have, Anyway, whatever. Anyway, good book. There, and actually, you know, Tinderbox is a good book in itself, but it is very much, you know, everybody is kind of like sucking up. Even the people who kind of disagree with the other person, with the, with the executives or whomever, and they're kind of like, yeah, this person was great. <laughs> but it is, it is tough to see people leave in that in that way and, and not be able to, um, uh, 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 you know, you this is something you've wanted to do to work in this industry and then to be forced out because some uh, some actor felt uncomfortable around you because you're a different color or because you're a different gender or or because uh, they they didn't know how to write you, you know, or a, a writer know how to write you or they're just, you know, straight up racist or sexist. OK, what else? What else is going on? Uh, oh, this one, this one I never believed when it came up. This is from Jennifer Moss at Variety. Will Bob Iger sell Disney's linear TV networks, insiders, and analysts debate? Um, the the idea was that there was a big rumor that ABC is looking to get rid, excuse me, Disney's looking to get rid of ESPN, which is, I think, such a naive move for them. Uh, but that was like, like it was, they're, they're trying to, uh, reduce costs and ESPN, I guess is a big enough cost for them to get rid of, which I just doesn't make sense to me. Um, and apparently the rumor is that Iger, Bob Iger wants to get rid, Disney CEO, Robert Iger wants to get rid of, uh, ABC, the broadcasting company, uh, the American broadcasting company. And, uh, and this is after he'd, he'd, he'd said, uh, some, kind of out of not kind of very out of touch comments about the strikes the sag after strike and wga strike uh by saying they're not being quote-unquote realistic in their contract negotiations uh dude you're making a quarter million dollars per year same thing for zaslov like i mean and probably for bob backish and the rest uh yeah he, you drank water because you ate all that dirt <laughs> but yeah it's uh it's it's it was frustrating here nonetheless but the idea is that they want to sell ABC, as well as Cablers, FX, Disney Channel, Nat Geo, and Freeform. Or no, excuse me, they just want to sell ABC. Okay, right. I was looking to provoke by announcing Disney's intention to quote open-minded and objective futures about those of business. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. About its about its networks. So that includes so everything from ABC to FX, Disney Channel, Nat Geo, and Freeform. Which I know uh, Disney's Disney's uh, they may have started in film. And they have, and they definitely uh, did peak in television, but there is something, and then they, they dominated stream. They have been dominating streaming, uh, but there's something in all of those facets. I mean, there's a reason why there's still, I was going to say why Warner still owns Warner music group, but I mean, it, but I, and I don't necessarily think, I don't know if that, if, if they're making money off that same thing for Sony. Yeah. I don't know if people are making money from music uh, and they obviously probably are, but the thing is th- you I, like you should always 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 have different avenues because you if you put if they let's pretend they got rid of their networks including not ESPN but let's let's say they go okay there's no more room for Disney Channel Freeform FX ABC whatever uh, and we're just only gonna have ESPN and and um, uh, Disney Plus and streaming uh, you lose a big chunk of your revenue I mean you you lose people. Like me again, turning to diamonds, drivers, and dives, <laughs> and watching marathons. But you lose you lose that sense of uh, urgency to watch something. Whereas there's a lot, like again, you have to be when you say, "Hey, I want to watch 
Um, what's the Disney show? Haley's on it. I've not seen that show yet, but I, I want to. Or you want to watch uh, the Ghost of uh, the Ghost of Molly McGee? You want to sit there, like no one. I I I I mean, people do do this, but this is not something I do. When I I have I have intention when I want to watch something. If I want to watch Righteous Gemstones, I'm gonna sit down and watch Righteous Gemstones. Versus, I'm not gonna just start at episode one and then put it on and then walk away because that's you know for for. It just doesn't make sense. So people don't watch regular TV the way they watch streaming is what I'm saying. And ABC, even if viewers are leaving television vanilla, you know, uh, there's that doesn't necessarily mean that there's still not an audience. You know, you can still just because not we're not getting 20 million viewers per episode of what's on ABC uh, Abbott Elementary doesn't mean that the the dedicated viewers aren't there. It's fun to watch something live. It's great. It's fun to watch something on DVR and fast forward still. I mean, it's a lot worse because it does, it's not completely HD. It's not 4K. But it's fun to have it there. I just watched Young Guns on AMC. Did I like that the words were bleeped out? No. <laughs> it also sucks. This is one thing I this is one thing I really, really dislike, especially about things that are airing um, in rerun format. I don't like it when jokes are cut out. So sometimes you'll watch The Office. Sometimes I'll watch, uh, I don't know, whatever, King of the Hill, whatever. But a lot of the, most of the time I'm watching The Simpsons, especially if it's on FXX. And, uh, and I'm quoting an episode to the T. Like I can quote a lot of episodes from season one to season 30. Uh, I'm at the, the, the later, the, the 31 on, I have, I haven't watched a lot, um, but I do watch. I do rewatch those episodes. This past season, I've been watch. I've been rewatching thirty four. Um, anyway, any, any hoosers. But if I'm quoting an episode and then the joke is cut off, I notice it. Or if I'm expecting a joke to come up, like here's here's one for instance, uh, Homer the clown. When Homer is Krusty the clown, uh, when Krusty the clown uh, is, uh, hires people out to be him, you know, he, get, he has a clown college or whatever. Uh, the the iconic joke from that episode is Homer beats up the uh, Hamburglar looking guy and he beats him to a like a bloody pulp and the kids are watching and one kid goes, stop, stop, he's already dead. Like that is such a funny joke and that was just on TV for the, I think it aired like twice in the past couple of weeks, uh, which happens all the time, which is insane. It's so crazy. Like... <laughs> They'll like they'll air an episode once, and then they'll do like a theme block, and then that episode will air in that same theme block. Anyway, uh, uh, but I, I I saw, but they they cut that joke, they cut that line, uh, and and a lot of times they speed up. Again, there there are rumors that TBS was speeding up Seinfeld years ago, and they were in order to fit in more commercials, and they were. And the uh, same thing happens to Brooklyn Nine Nine. You can tell, I can tell, it's sped up. Because Stephanie Beatrice's real voice is heard. It goes from a deep, gruff voice into a high-pitched voice. And it's true. So same thing for The Simpsons. I saw it last night. I'm not crazy. I saw it last night when uh, uh, when Lisa was talking and, and her and her voice like was reverberating. It was, it was going up and down, fledging up and down. And I'm not crazy. What are we talking about? Dear okay, Cable, all that stuff. Now, bouncing off of that, bouncing off of Disney selling ABC and other networks, this comes from The Hollywood Reporter written by Alex Weprin. Streaming giants have a local TV news problem. You can get local news on streaming. The problem is that it's it's gate-kept, and uh, and oftentimes you don't have it uh, for every single network. Uh, On NBC, for Peacock, you can get your NBC affiliate, but you have to pay for the highest tier. And for Paramount... Uh, for for CBS to get your local CBS affiliate, you have to pay for Paramount Plus. I hear him eating something, and I don't know what it is. Come here. I think it might be this bone I got. But according to Weprin. He asked this question, who exactly should be negotiating with the owners of streaming multi-channel video services, including ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox? Who's going to, per individual market, there are 600 
local stations around the around the U.S. I'll get. Hey, get off, get off, Maverick. Not allowed on the couch. He's not allowed on the furniture. Uh, <laughs> he woke Nova up, and now she's now she's just like sitting up. And she's mad. Uh, but but how how are they supposed to make a dent when it comes to the streaming thing and also get paid? Oh, someone's quote. This is a quote from the EW Scripts company. I'm not going to read this because I'm pissed off at them. So they have a, they they launch this new coalition. All of the all of the local station uh, uh, affiliates and everything just launched a coalition. Uh, and they launched it after the quarrel burst into the public eye as Fubo and Hulu saw local stations vanish for some customers. If they can't make these deals and make enough money, and they, they make money from ads, they make money from uh, being available on streaming services, they make money from you just watching even with rabbit ears, which I don't think exists anymore, with antennas. Antennae, excuse me. We've seen company, we've seen channels go dark. We've seen Fox affiliates or CBS affiliates or ABC. We've seen all these affiliates leave, you know, DirecTV. We've seen them leave Spectrum. We've seen them leave things. And it's because they're not able to strike good deals for themselves. They're fighting, and I just, and it pisses me off. <laughs> Under the current FCC rules, cable and TV satellite providers, uh, cable and satellite TV providers have to negotiate for a carriage of local stations directly with the owners of the stations, but they're what there's called a streaming loophole, VMVPDs, despite being streaming versions of traditional pay TV bundles, can instead negotiate with the network owners who then give their affiliates a take it or leave it deal. So it's much like me and my new job. <laughs> We're going to pay you less. <laughs> But I made this much money. No, you're not going to do that here. <laughs> I'm going to get in so much trouble. So this is all this is all very important, something to look out for. There's no ending to this. There's, there's, there's just a continued conversation. And finally, Cheddar may go up for sale. This comes from the New York Times... Deal book section. Altice USA said to be considering a sale of Cheddar News written by Lauren Hirsch and Benjamin Mullen. Now, if you don't know what Cheddar is, it's like CNBC. It's just like CNBC, but for the younger generation, for people who are on TikTok and all that stuff. And uh, they've been around for a couple of years now, but they were owned by a different company five years ago. Maverick. Maverick. Stop, man. Jeez, Louise. Uh, Altice USA hired Goldman Sachs to help explore strategic alternatives for Cheddar News, according to three people with knowledge on the matter. He spoke on the condition of anonymity. They cautioned that Altice was still weighing its options and could decide against the sale. Representatives for Altice USA and Goldman declined to comment. Uh, they paid for Altice paid for Cheddar uh, in 2019 for two hundred million dollars. The deal was seen as a way to uh, elevate. Um, uh, Israeli billionaire, uh, billionaire owner of Altice, Patrick uh, Drahi, elevate the company's news division, which also includes News 12 networks. Uh, I know News 12. It pitched itself, Shedder, as the future of financial news, interview, uh, featuring interviews with executives, newsmakers, and journalists from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. I think that um, just like BuzzFeed and just like other online, online news um, companies, uh, and even, you know, CNN, Fox, and MSNBC, um, the pandemic really, and you know, looking even looking at Vice and BuzzFeed in particular, the pandemic really put a halt in their plans for um, what, uh, uh, what Cheddar could have been. Altice also owns Gas Station TV, which is the TV you see at the gas stations. And they also own MTV's College Campus Network. Because Cheddar owns that, which I, I did not know. Anyway, uh, 
they're not they're, a lot of the ideas from Shutter are not as profitable as cable distribution deals. However, rather than having cable TV providers like Comcast pay for each of Cheddar's viewers, an industry practice known as carriage fees, which is typical, the channel relies mostly on advertising revenue. That's a tough business model for media companies competing against tech giants like Meta and TikTok for a share of the digital market. And yes, Cheddar has recently laid off employees. Um, Altius is, ooh, shares are down 70% over the past year. Good Lord. And the company has declined in profit and revenue. Um, you know, Cheddar, for for what it is, I, I think just like Vice, there is, it. I mean, it is kind of necessary. Um, but I think if, if people are interested in uh, numbers, if people who are millennials and who are that TikTok generation, Gen Z, if um, – if people are, if those people are include uh, uh, interested in in what's going on in terms of numbers, I think they'll just watch CNBC for a little bit, or they'll Google or Bing, uh, <laughs> Bing it. <laughs> they'll Bing. Remember when? Um, uh, this is a very deep cut. Uh, Jonah Ryan was the mascot for Bing, <laughs> and he would go around to real people and ask them about, you know, hey, you should Bing it. <laughs> That's not a direct quote. Uh, yeah, but I, 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 there's there's other avenues uh, uh, past past cheddar, um, like like Vice TV, or Vice on TV, whatever. Uh, it should not have been a TV network. They would, I understand why they went the route of having a TV network. Same thing for Magnolia. I understand why Magnolia and that and Tastemate uh, are all all have all have television networks, but. Uh, there they could better reach an audience if it was just on, uh, if they did like a, a a big massive push on TikTok online on Instagram on things like that YouTube whatever, um, and for what it's worth, Cheddar I think is a, a, po- a very polished place, but it does scream of, uh, b- putting paint, you know, a fresh coat of wax on CNBC, which in and of itself needs to happen. So there we go. That's it. Listen, if you like what you heard here, and I don't know why you wouldn't, head to the website, cpluscomedy.com, where you can see me talk to uh, some uh, uh, famous people sometimes. Uh, I don't have any interviews coming up in the future. Uh, In 10 days, actually, 10 days from this, August 11th. I don't know when this is going to go up. But on August 11th, I will be doing – I have one interview that I recorded before the SAG after strike. It's not that long, uh, but it is with two people I like. Uh, Two two big people I like. And uh, I, I, I can't even talk about what, what show it is because I can't promote it. <laughs> but an interview will be coming out, and that's what's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to feature two people, and there's going to be a, it's going to be about a, it's going to talk about a show or something, whatever. <laughs> okay, um, uh, online you can follow us online, social media at Simples Comedy, and me at Chad Black White. Uh, news time will return soon. I have to shoot like 30 episodes in a row. So we'll see what happens with that. All right. Thanks for listening. Bye.